Good morning, happy Sunday morning. It's Chris, Christine Kutcher from Create with Christine and I'm here with a live Sunday morning stamping with you. Um, if you're catching me live or watching the replay, thanks for checking this out this morning. This morning I am going to be featuring a gift box and sorry this is not the best um, look but it is a gift box and I'm featuring the poinsettia place suite of products. So those are on pages 14 to 16 in the August to December mini catalog. So here's a look at the stamp set and then it's got coordinating dies with it. So I'm using the Merry Christmas stamp but then I'm using the poinsettia dies to kind of embellish my box. So I'm going to point the camera down and go ahead and get started. So hold tight for just a minute. Okay, so here's my project for today. I'm gonna make sure I can find myself in my feed just to make sure I am in the frame. And I hope the volume is okay this week. It was a little bit quiet last week, so I tried to make sure my volume was up before I started. It's um, kind of a really kind of gloomy cloudy day here so my lighting is not the best this morning then when I added lights it was too bright so we can't win okay I am not popping up in my feed so there is a delay but again this is the box we're gonna make and I wanted to feature the designer series paper because it's on sale through the end of this month which is this Saturday October 31st and there's a bunch of, there's 15 of the designer series papers that are on sale. So I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that sale. And again, here's a look at the stamp set. So let's go ahead and do the box first. So I'm going to do the lid first. And what I did was I cut out all the pieces ahead of time. So just to save time on the video, I have a six by six piece of the Poinsettia Place Designer Series paper. And what I did is I went ahead and I scored at one and a quarter on all four sides. So I did that ahead of time just to save time here. So I know it's hard to see because this pattern's a little bit busy, but maybe you can see a little bit better on this side. So what I'm gonna do is just Fold. You could use a bone folder here too. I don't have mine handy. I should have grabbed it, but I did not. So just fold. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut on two sides up to the score lines. So I'm just going to bring over my paper snips. Super simple. We're going to make two snips on either side. So one snip there, one snip there. And then we're gonna flip, rotate, and then another snip here. And another snip here. I'm trying to stay in the frame as much as I can. Okay, so then this is gonna be our box lid. So what I want to do is I want to adhere my tabs inside so you don't see my seams. So I want to put adhesive on all four of my tabs. And again, this is a little bit busy. I'm gonna use tear and tape adhesive. So once you have the measurements for this box, you can make this for any season. It actually holds three by three cards. It's about three and a quarters on the bottom. So it will hold three by three cards and envelopes. And it, my box, my sample right now, I've got four of the standard Stampin' Up! spools of ribbon. So it holds quite a bit. Could put a small gift, candy. So just to kind of give you a frame of reference. Okay. So after I do my tear and tape, I kind of like to burnish a little bit with my fingernail. And 
I also didn't grab my take your pick tool, but you could actually use your take your pick tool to help get your adhesive off. So I'm just gonna remove, I'll just do one kind of side that I'm in the camera. Okay, so then what I wanna do is put my tab behind. And if you find that you have a little bit poking out, it's not a problem at all. You can snip off with your paper snips. Okay, so this side is ready to go. Whoops. Then I've got one more. So we're gonna repeat this process with the box bottom. The box bottom, I'm using Garden Green cardstock to coordinate with the designer series paper. It's an eight and three eighth square piece. So you can use an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. And I'm gonna score that piece, or I actually did score at two and a half on all four sides. So again, here is the lid, and the lid was a six by six piece of cardstock. And so it's great because 12, this is a 12 by 12, so you have no waste if you were to make a whole bunch of boxes. And we scored at one and a quarter on all four sides to make the lid. Okay, so let's bring over the bottom. So again, this is Garden Green, eight and three eighths by eight and three eighths. And what I did was scored at two and a half on all four sides. So now we're just gonna fold. Okay, so once I get a nice fold, I can cut on two sides up to the score line. And then flip over and I'm going to cut up to the sides too. And then we're just going to repeat and do our tear and tape. So I want my tabs to go on the inside. So I'm actually going to flip over this time and do my tear and tapes on all four tabs. So this is about as easy I can get for making a box from scratch. I hope your weekend is going well. We're kind of in for a shock today and yesterday it was 70 degrees here. It was cloudy but it was really warm. We went for a nice long walk. And today it's gonna be a high in the low 50s. And I think this is definitely the week we kind of transition to the cooler weather. So I don't wanna jinx it. So I won't say anything more about that, but it's be a great day to do some crafting. I have a stamping team meeting this afternoon and then I can also work on some projects, my Casing Tuesday project for Tuesday that I post every week. And then I'm actually cooking up a fundraiser with a group of demonstrators from actually not even all local. Some of them are outside of this area. So I have all my tear and tape on and I'm going to remove all my pieces Whoops. Okay, so I just want them to go inside like so. I hope you caught that. And again, if you have a little bit like I do here, you could always trim this off with some paper snips if it bothers you. This is the lid is gonna cover that, so it's really up to you 
what you prefer. So now I can do the other side. So the fundraiser would have been next Saturday. It's Stamp Out Breast Cancer, and we've done it for 10 years. And this year it's gonna be Stamp Out Breast Cancer at Home. And there's a whole group of us. We're, do, we're creating projects, and there will be a project tutorial. So if you buy the tutorial, if you donate to the charity, which is Making Strides Against Breast Cancer, you'll get a 16 card tutorial. So I'll have more details out on my Facebook and blog this week about that. So I've got my box bottom all set. So again, for the bottom, it was a piece of garden green cardstock, eight and three eighths by eight and three eighths. And then I scored at two and a half on all four sides. So I've got my lid in my bottom and I'll put the measurements below so that fits beautifully. But now I actually want to do some decorating. So I decided to use the poinsettia dies so everything would coordinate. And what I did is I cut out three sizes. So this is with the red foil. So I did the largest, the middle, and the tiny. And the measurements were for the largest, three and a half by three and a half, the middle, three by three, and then the smallest one, two and a half by two and a half. So what I did first was I actually cut out this piece. This is the dies. And this is kind of like the outline. And then they have another piece that coordinates in the dies that is the detail. So I actually cut out all three of the outline first. And then I ran through a second time with the detail. You could probably do it at the same time but I just wanted to make sure I had a, a nice little, a nice look and my dies didn't move or anything. So I did run it through twice. Because they're different sizes, you could actually, um, you know, with these, you could do two at a time, side by side. Um, so it's not that much of an investment. Okay, so I've got my pieces. I'm actually gonna get, get this out of the way for a minute and put this over here so we can do the pieces. So what I wanted to do was make my poinsettia and I kind of found that looking at it, I wanted it to not be perfectly um, like with one petal up and down. So I want to make sure I'm in the frame when I do this and I keep moving around. So sorry about that. <coughs> But I am going to put on with mini glue dots. And what I wanted to do is just kind of make sure if this was the top, I kind of wanted to move it like so. And then I'm going to overlay. I hope that makes sense. So I'm using mini glue dots. And it seems to be like I'm moving the wrong way. So let me try up here. Okay, I think that is better. So I'm gonna put the middle one to the largest with a mini glue dot. And I'll show you why I'm using mini glue dots. Whoops, see I almost goofed. And then a mini glue dot in the small. Okay, and that builds a beautiful poinsettia. And then I have the, this is from the same suite of products, the Beaded Pearls. And I'm just going to put that in the middle with, again, mini glue dots. I'm using a lot of mini glue dots here. So I'll put that in the middle like so. It's beautiful. And I need to do my stamping. So let me switch gears and do my stamping so then I can assemble everything together. So I'm just gonna bring over my pierce mat. I have a piece of Whisper White cardstock that is three quarters by three and a quarter. And I'm gonna stamp in real red the Merry Christmas. 
if I can get my ink pad to open. There we go. So, so like I said, now that you'll have the measurements for this box, you could create it for any holiday or event. If you're watching and you're a demonstrator, like I said, it holds about four rolls of Stampin' Up! ribbon. So if you were looking for a cute way to present ribbon to a team member or at a retreat, that would work out oh, great. Okay, so I've got my Merry Christmas and my poinsettia. So what I decided to do was just hang it off the edge with mini glue dots. So why don't we bring everything over and start kind of assembling. So I have a piece of the Real Red Sheer Ribbon that's from the Poinsettia Suite. Good morning, Kathy. Thanks for tuning in this morning. So this piece of ribbon is 26 inches long. So what I want to do is put it around towards the top. And right now my box is completely empty, so you want to make sure to fill in your goodies before obviously you tie the ribbon on. Actually, I was able to get the slip the ribbon off, so you could tie everything up and decorate it and then do add your stuff later. So I want to make sure my tails are about the same length. And then I'm going to do a bow. <coughs> I obviously needed to have some water and I don't have any water at the handy. So, oh, right when I go live, I start coughing. Okay, so I'm just tying a bow and you could totally do this opposite, the opposite way. Uh, this is how I did my original. I did my bow first so I could tuck in my poinsettia underneath. Okay, so I can futz with it later and make it look pretty, but I just wanted to show you, I can tuck my piece underneath the way I want it. So you can kind of move it around to see what you like. I'm just going to use mini glue dots. Uh, if anybody's counting, I'm not sure what I'm up to. I've probably used about 10 or so. Whoops, that one didn't come off. I'll put one more for good measure. Whoops. So I like to use mini glue dots with the foil paper. So here's my poinsettia and I kind of like it. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm going to sort of tuck under. I still have to add on my Merry Christmas. So you could do off to one side, whatever makes you happy. But see, I can tuck it right under my ribbon and then kind of bring the ribbon and futz with it to make it look pretty. And then my Merry Christmas that I stamped, I can kind of tuck under and hang it off the side like so. So I'm going to put, of course, what? A couple more mini glue dots. I like to use them when I'm using the foil because it's shiny paper. And let me tell you, the hardest part about using it is trying to not get your fingerprints on it while you're cutting it and working with it. So I'm just going to hang this kind of off the side. I try to decide, do I want it down the bottom? You could do down the bottom, hanging off the corner. You could poke a hole in it and tie it from your bow. So again, whatever makes you happy. So because I only put glue dots in the center of my poinsettias, I can actually flip up my petals to give them a more 3D look. So I just said earlier, you'll see why I only have the mini glue dots in the center. So again, here's my original. And then here is the one we just made together. So I can futz with the bow and make this look pretty later. But these boxes will hold three by three cards and you could actually decorate them to coordinate for like Christmas tags and they would hold uh, about four rolls of Stampin' Up! ribbon. So you could get or a whole bunch of candy or a small gift. So just a couple different ideas of what to do with these boxes and I'll have the measurements below. So. 
switching gears, I just wanted to quickly mention that I have a product-based class and registration is closing this Wednesday. So I just wanted to show the cards really quick. This is card number one and card number two. Wow, I'm dropping them. Card number three and card number four. So this features the Wrapped in Christmas stamp set, the Tis the Season designer series paper, the Wonderful Gems, and the, I believe it's Wonder of the Season ribbon combo pack. So you're going to get a quarter pack of the designer series paper, a full pack of the ribbon, and a full pack of the gems. So you can find the details on my blog at christinestamps.blogspot.com and you can sign up for that. Registration is going to close this Wednesday, October 28th. And actually, I'm just going to bring the camera back up to finish up and just wanted to say again, the designer series paper sale at 15% off. The 15 papers that are on sale end this Saturday, October 31st. So don't forget about that. On our website at stampinup.com, you can see the papers that are on sale. There are a couple that are on back order or low inventory. So if you have questions about that, um, let me know because I can find out when they are expected to come off of back order. And let's see, like I mentioned, I am part of a Stamp Out Breast Cancer at Home fundraiser that we normally do in person every year this time of year. So I'll have details out this week about that. But if you donate to the charity, you will get a 16 card tutorial. And it's actually four different stamp sets. So it's a really great value. So I would appreciate uh, being as generous as you can when you see that come out to my mailing list. And if you're not on my mailing list, please shoot me a message. You can actually sign up at my blog to christinestamps.blogspot.com. And yeah, that's it. Have a happy Halloween on Saturday and I will be back on Sunday with another project to share. Have a great week.